all right you're still watching ways um today is world day for safety and health at work mm. and it's celebrated annually on the 28th of april to promote the prevention of occupational accidents and disease globally um it is an awareness ra uh, raising campaign intended to focus international attention on the magnitude of the problem and on how promoting and creating a safety and health culture can help reduce the number of work-related death and injury. In 2003, the International Labor Organization began to observe World um, Day in order to stress the prevention of accidents and diseases at work, capitalizing on the international, um, the ILO's tradition strength of um, tripartism and social dialogue. 28th of April is also the International Commemoration Day for dead and injured workers organized worldwide by trade union movements since 1996. So this is a very, very important day. I remember um, one time where we were having, um, uh, sorry, like I think house, this house fellowship that we have, somebody was sharing a testimony how he lost his arm at the factory, you know, and how even the insensitivity of the, the employees, right, you know, they were a setting, I won't call the nationality, but be race. But they were a certain race that, and he was saying how bad that the Nigerian labor laws were not even protecting Nigerians that work for foreigners in such factories, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine doing something, all those machinery works, and you lost your arm. Nothing, you know, so they had to do, they had to do the protest and all of that. Mm -hmm. So days like this just tells us that there are really bad hazards at work. Again, mm -hmm. people that are exposed to chemicals, mm -hmm. we're not even talking about normal work yes all those people that work in all these factories and Actually, all of that what are the prevent yes construction you know yeah. see somebody Minus, dying and all of that so absolutely. what are the preventive measures you know to ensure that there are no death and there's safety at the work and even if there are accidents that happen what what is done to compensate the saying, families yeah. of of the of disease the, yeah it's, it's just making even sure just that, injuring injuring yeah. yourself you, it may not even lead to death but the fact that for example the man that, that lost, lost his arm, his arm mm -hmm. he has to be compensated mm. labor laws do they um do they so do they actually push for, for and even the unions in some of those areas, mm -hmm. do they push for the benefits that it's, it's an implement? Um, it's, up for now. it's a monitoring and implementation thing because mm. we do have laws around, and there are several insurance packages. You know, workman's compensation, yeah. um, even um, what's it called now? The uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the one that's mandatory. So if mm. you pass away um, whilst working for a company, life insurance. Li yeah, life insurance, but it's called something in particular, but it okay. escapes me now. Um, but even just in the HSE space, particularly in the sectors you talked mm -hmm. about, oil and gas manufacturing, just the requirements are there in terms of protective gear and all of that that they're supposed to be wearing. Mm -hmm. But how many people are actually enforcing these laws? Yeah. When we talk about, I mean, the story has died now, the building that collapsed a few months ago. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, all of these things come into play when we talk HSC, about yeah. Yeah, looking at, at, at that. And in that case, case, there was lots of like, you know, talking about HSE, some companies take it very, very seriously. Yeah, so absolutely. in, in yeah, December, when I went mm -hmm. to visit my dad, he's a major contractor mm -hmm. with Nigerian Beers in Kaduna all those things they mark, and I know Unilever does that yeah. as well. A lot of the manufacturing, a lot of yes, a lot of yeah. top uh, yes, a international lot. bodies. Mm -hmm. They do, they follow those products. Like you, if you do that, they sanction you. You mm. might even lose your the your license. license as a contractor with yeah, the company. So absolutely. you must put in those safety measures. Yeah. So if they don't do it like that, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. And forcing them also makes oh, yes. those companies accountable. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what are we starting with? Oti, let me start with you. What did you find for us in the news? <laughs> So this story, huh. <laughs> so let me just read my headline. CBN blames falling Naira on Nigerians' import dependency. It says, was. No successful economy thrives on the promotion of imported products <laughs> over the exportation of That's local true. products. Now, um, our Apex Bank, the CBN, says that we are to adopt homemade products to boost Nigeria's economy and stop the Naira from depreciating further in the parallel market. He says that um, the COVID-19 pandemic was Nigeria's savings grace for improved rice availability. Mm. And then goes on to say that um, interventions in agriculture, manufacturing, and other sectors um, are reasons why, um, are things that the government is doing to impact our um, depreciation or impact the economy. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, why this story stood out for me? It's like what we are talking about today. Putting the 
No, I mean, it's like telling me what's obvious. Mm. First of all, we do that we're import dependent. Mm. But just like the larger topic that we're discussing today, mm. it's not smoke and mirrors. You can't tell me, right, that mm. I should buy Nigeria when majority of the products or the raw materials that are needed to make the Nigerian products mm. are still imported. Mm -hmm. The ones that we actually grow here, i.e. the tomatoes, the rice, the... Mm. Do you remember the saga the last time about the rice pyramids and whether they would fall and whether they the rice? And then the there's, there is tomatoes and oranges when all of these things are in season. Yeah. This, the entire value chain has not been optimized. I don't even think it exists. Because in every, for every vegetable, every fruit that is in season, the wastage is huge. Mm. So we haven't done anything about this. Then we say that it is the things that we, we have no hope of making here currently. That <laughs> yes, is making the our, problem. Our, 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 you know, and you know, it's a peck. You know, but it's even the lack of creativity. <laughs> because let's be fair, it's important to have exports, mm. right? Yeah. We have, and it's largely because we've become so dependent on crude. But the fact is, we were exports, major exporters of cocoa. We, today, we're still major exporters of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But quality is a problem. Mm. A lot of our products, Gary, all of these things, are turned back in European countries because of the so level of well chemicals processed. and things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. have grown on it so because it wasn't properly these processed. These are the things that we need to look at. And mm. these are the things we need to fix. Now, might I add that we're all talking about this from an export perspective we're also not thinking about the values we have for importation mm. on holiday i'm looking at everywhere i've been to and i'm thinking we brought our money here we by ourselves brought our money here to do the things that were man-made that we have naturally mm. lagos has water we've done nothing with our waterways the amount of tourism options that are available in this country today but because of security because of infrastructure issues Okay. The money that should be imported. Let's say we don't already imported. enter the conversation. Calm mm -hmm. down. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to this quickly. <laughs> <laughs> we run out of time. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep it as brief as possible. While we're talking about healthcare, um, my story is on the Kaduna train attack that the pregnant woman, one of the pregnant women who were who was uh, kidnapped uh, about a month ago. Yeah. You won't believe that it's already 30 days yeah. since time flies. She was, yeah. uh, they were kidnapped. Yeah. Um, gives birth in the terrorist den. Oh wow. Now. Look, the fact that she was in the terrorist den is another thing. They kidnapped her while she was even pregnant. And she was eight months pregnant when they took her away. And they didn't even bother to take her to a hospital. They brought in a medical, uh, a set of medical personnel to come and attend to her. Did, at least they did that. Should she be grateful? She, sh she should, should she really be grateful? What, are, what is the circumstances where she gave birth? Hmm. What is surrounding that environment Easy. where she gave birth? Easy. Easy. They didn't cut the child out of they her. Didn't cut her they, they, they didn't cut the child. See, I mean, okay, you know what? Let's move on. Because <laughs> these are all part of the conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Norman, let me well, hear your story. Still on health, well, insecurity this time around, we have a case of the missing court member hmm. finally really found sad. dead. Oh, okay. sad. And NYC is probing the killing so this story really touched me it said a member of the national youth service court identified as stephanie siemba terungwa has been found dead in abuja the nyc director of press and public relations eddie megua said this and um, he also said that the attention of nyc management has been drawn to the pictures that made the rounds on social media yeah. of the missing call member deployed to fct and then she was found wearing nyc khakis mm -hmm. trousers with the face, face badly defaced yes. beyond recognition badly, I read also this. i uh, read that a lot of her major vital organs oh, yes. were also missing, missing. Oh, wow. right so and this young lady went out because she was i think it was her day there's this thing that you have cds day mm -hmm. yeah. and she went out wearing community her uniform to go to her, her community development site and that was how she was missing, missing. since the 14th of april and only mm. to be found dead. dead and this is happening in the federal capital, capital. territory mm -hmm. absolutely so it still borders on the security issue is it it's this uh, ritual killing mm -hmm. is this what, whatever it is i mean nyc says that will get they will get to the bottom of this but this continues to just to speak to the level of insecurity that absolutely. we are facing and i hope our senate you are listening because we've not even started the mm -hmm. conversation yet mm -hmm. my story is just quickly um something i needed to draw our attention to i saw mm -hmm. a video 
of a young man that um, was attacked in traffic. Mm -hmm. And he was talking oh, yes. about, I think his name is Soro, Soro So Be Berekon or something. That's his name. <laughs> so he, you know, Soso, right? Soso mm -hmm. Berekon. He, he said, Lekki Ekpa Expressway, which we all know, mm -hmm. Freedom Way. Mm -hmm. I, I run from that place every day, time. night, every time. about it several, several times. times. Mm -hmm. Or Jota Oshodi. So he was calling on the governor of Lagos State, Baba Jije Soulu, that what are you doing about this? Because it's seeming like the way he sounded in that video, it was like was it saying that I am ready to go now. Myself. Yeah. To him. So yeah. while I was still on that video, I then saw another video, Chidi Mokeme's mm -hmm. video. Mm -hmm. when he, so I was wondering why was Chidi Mokeme driving inside a car that was presumably, uh, the windows were presumably up mm -hmm. and he was all sweaty. Only for him to span the, the camera the vehicle. and you could see that the back win, um, uh, the windows had been smashed. Screen. Jonathan, he was not asking, ah, what's happening? What's up with Lagos? Mm -hmm. Right? So this is the current situation. And so I like when we are trying to break, bring laws and all of that. You put everything holistically. Because is it me that they will kidnap now? My, my parents will not pay ransom or something. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, will we keep quiet and wait? Mm -hmm. I listened to an audio of a, a gospel artist that was kidnapped. I don't know if I shared that. Yes, 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 yes. yes. When he was talking about that, if you don't pay the uh, ransom, then and then they decide they and this your body and part and, and they go and sell your body part that anyhow, anyhow, they cannot lose. Mm -hmm. So a senate will not come and say mm -hmm. you want to put a jail term to the person that is trying to rescue his the family. Is that a double double? Mm -hmm. You know what? Let's take a break. Let's take a break. When we come back from the break, we are going to uh, discuss this and would really love to hear your thoughts as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back.